things. Yeah. Um, versus when you're in person, and I think Reggie did such a great job of capturing that, like the raunchiness of it, um, the glorifying of it, and then when they're in person, they're kind of like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Like how we as um, I too was like I went to like all all girl Catholic schools, so um, I feel like I didn't feel like I could talk about those things in public, but I was feeling them all the time. Um, so I loved as a woman who was seeking this, needed this, knew what she wanted and needed, and asked for it. I just love seeing a woman do that on stage, um, and how it manifests whether I am on a screen or when you're finally there in person. All the more. Mm -hmm. comes to the service. Hi, what inspired this? Uh, a couple things. So the first thing that inspired it was I read this article from the Johnson Skill about accessibility in the theater, um, particularly when it comes to those who are hard of hearing. So ultimately what I would like to see, the text messages are being read mm -hmm. as it's being performed so that people who are hard of hearing, you don't have to rely necessarily on the sign of interpretation to be able to see the production. Um, but uh, I was of the uh, that was like one source of inspiration. The other source of inspiration uh, was during the pandemic. There were so many caregivers that were taking care of their family. Mm -hmm. My uncle got diagnosed with colon cancer, and my aunt was running herself ragged. Um, and I was like, who was taking care of these caregivers? And then um, I've been listening to a podcast called Multi Amory about polyamory and about this relationship structure and. Um, and I've just been, I was hella repressed growing up. This is the first time I've ever ventured into writing a two person play. It was the first time I've ever ventured into anything so smutty. But I was like, you know what? Let's, let's go into uncomfortable territory. So yeah, I was, just, all of those things kind of came together into like text messages, accessibility in the theater, what is a woman making choices for herself and defining her own journey look like? What does polyamory look like on stage? There are no, at least in my, Canon of literature, I've never read a positive view of polyamory on stage. Um, and then, you know, what do we say about caregivers who are running themselves ragged and do they get to experience pleasure? Like, because that's one thing that we don't talk about. Like, like pleasure is this thing that's like, oh, only if you get to it. But it's a part of our humanity and do we deserve it? You know, so that's when the, that podcast talks a lot about, you know, that we as humans deserve pleasure and what does that look like? So. Smallest thing. Mm -hmm. Wrote the erotica wonderfully. Did I write it? Mm -hmm. So you better write more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful love story, mm -hmm. you know. 
uh, regardless of how they talk. It was just beautiful. It was just a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, I was hearing out of that.
casting in mind, I have put this in my script that I want a heavy set black man to be. So when we talk about him being big, it's not about the size of his member, it's about him being a bigger presence. Because, um, and then the Latino woman is shorter and curvier. And the reason I have that in my notes, I say, is because it's not, this has not been conventionally displayed as attractive in the media. This is not the, the symbol of beauty and conventional beauty that we have. Um, and I specifically says that I don't want these characters to be fetishized and that rather audience to see a different body type on stage that's deep, desirable, and worthy of love and affection. And to me, because a lot of times, you know, when we see a bigger, heavy set black man, we think, oh, he's the comedic relief. He's the funny guy. But when we see a curvier woman of color, we're like, oh, she's the best friend. Like, no, both of those people are deserving to be the romantic lead. Uh, in their story, so I I usually am not so specific in my cast. I usually like whoever wants to play the role, but this one I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Specifically want those characters on stage, and also allow casting directors to be like, I want to see these people on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, again, not to be fetishized, but to be seen as beautiful, desirable, oh. beautiful things. So, so yeah. Thank you. Um, and as always, we're going to close out with one word, one phrase, and just offer it to the space, whatever's on your mind, your heart, uh, cast, do that as well. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Lovely journey. Lovely journey. One word is deliver. Deliver. The big thing is deliver.